Bill Parcells obsessed with rats. Yeah. That's the question. Because that's all you ever hear. With what? I, I, that, that was my question. I've heard that story about eight million times. I bet you. Great quote from Jeremy. Cheese in the lot? Yeah. Oh. And there was actual cheese in the lot? Oh, there already is. Well, back then there was. Going to this yeah. Yep, we good? I'd like to start by thanking our fans for uh, Saturday. It was an unbelievable atmosphere. We had a lot of recruits on campus, a lot of really good players too. And, God, it was special. I know our players commented, the guys that have been here before, it was electric in the stadium. So really want to thank our fans and, and really the students and everybody involved. It was, it was really a great atmosphere, and I know for sure that helped us, and especially that, sec that second half when we really got things going. And the, it was loud, and, man, it was a big-time atmosphere. So can't say enough about our – our fans are doing a great job. Our students, thanks for coming and being loud, and uh, let's keep it rolling. That's, we need them here for the for the rest of them too. And uh, you know, every get, every week gets bigger. So, uh, really appreciate that. All right, questions. Good. Uh, back to talking about the importance of halftime adjustments mm -hmm. in every game, certainly Saturday. Yeah. How do you use that time to kind of make the change you need to make? Talk a little bit about what you did Saturday and how. Yeah. That well, I think first of all, it's a it's a it's a combined effort of our staff, you know, uh, Randy Clements being our O-line coach and really handling the run game and, and uh, having some different ways to present the same runs that we ran in the first half. Uh, I think that was huge. Uh, but, you know, Freddie, his input, uh, Lonnie, his input, Larry, I mean, all, all four of us or all five of us, I guess, putting our heads together. And really, I think it becomes, okay, what have we been good at in the first half? Why hadn't certain things worked? Is it we didn't execute it or is it just not a good call, you know? Because every, every time you play someone, they're always going to present a few different things than you've seen on film and you're not expecting. And, and Miami did the same thing. And uh, so I just think, you know, as a staff, you're always trying to make sure, you know, you check the boxes when the, when the game starts. Okay, did they line up like we think? Are they presenting anything different, any new pressure, any new coverage or, or whatever? How, what do we need to do to adjust in the second half? And, you know, make notes throughout the first half and then, you know, get together at halftime very quickly because it takes a little bit to get down and back and so forth. But if you're organized, I think we have a great plan at halftime. Everybody's got a responsibility and we kind of, you know, organize and go through it and then present it to our guys and make sure they understand because that's the big thing. If they don't understand what we're doing, uh, it's not going to be any good. So, uh, so far, I've been really pleased with how our staff has done that. You said um, the, the offense in general, right? Yeah. Ted scores three touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Marion has 200-some-odd yards rushing. Yeah. Drake does his thing. Is this the most fun you've had calling an offense in your career? Uh, it's definitely one of, for sure. You know, you remember um, – you know, obviously, you go back through the years, and, and uh, some years uh, were better than others or, or whatever, but it's all about the players. But I'm just enjoying coaching these guys. These guys are, man, they're eager. You know, they're, they're eager. They, they want to please. They want to they uh, know what to do and why we're doing it. They're smart guys. They practice. They do everything we ask them to do, and that makes it fun to come to work every day and coach guys that, that want to be coached. And, and uh, I think that's what's special right now. We'll look back later and see really how special it is. But through six games, I like the, the, the direction we're headed. But we still got a lot of things that we can improve on. I mean, you know, you go back through it. Uh, yesterday or Sunday, I was showing them 15 clips of, man, Miami didn't do anything here that we didn't think and we didn't execute for whatever reason. So you're always trying to clean that up and, and get better. And we got a lot of things we can improve on. And I think stuff like that's for, for later on down the road, looking back, you know, and seeing uh, what, 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 we, what we did. But right now, we hadn't really accomplished anything other than, you know, we're in a good spot and we got to keep working every week. Coming back to the half time adjustments, yeah. this year you guys are outscoring teams 71 to 24 in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. What about this group makes them? Yes, particularly good at responding to those adjustments and actually executing them, especially early on in the second half. Yeah, that's a good question. I think a lot of it's our players. They're, they're smart guys. They, their football IQ is pretty high. I think our each coaches in their individual meetings during the week try to explain the why of we're doing something, not just memorizing the play. I think that helps some too. And then again, I think it goes back to our staff. We got we got a strong staff that. Uh, you know, that we're disciplined, I think, about uh, understanding our responsibilities and, and having answers that within our system. You know, what you don't want is a guy coming in and say, hey, we need to do this, but we've never done that before, right? Because there's a lot of good plays out there. So it's things that fit in our system that fit what we're seeing. I think that's a big part of it. And, 
you know, so far that's been good, and there will be more challenges as we go, and we, we've got to stay f focused and disciplined on, on those things as we move forward. Max said that when you play really talented teams like Miami, sometimes there's a chance of more, more penalties, especially like holding or something like that because they're good. Sometimes teams have yeah. to, they just naturally resort to that. What do you chalk up some of the additional holding calls? You guys had more of those yeah, we Saturday did. than usual. Yeah, you know, I think we almost 100 yards of offense that we left out there based on the penalties. and. You know, we've been pretty disciplined all year, and I think probably what Coach said about, you know, you play a talented team, a little quicker, a little stronger, a little faster than you think, uh, probably has something to do with it. But we got to go back this week and really coach our guys on what those penalties are and why we had those penalties. And most of the time, the penalties occur because we didn't get in the right position initially, right? And then we got we have to understand that we have to uh, when when you're losing and the guys you're losing your man, you got to let him go. And uh, you know some some uh, referee crews are are way way more way more aggressive throwing flags than others, and we got to adjust. And uh, they threw a lot of flags on both sides, I think, Saturday. And you know we got to do a great job as coaches of making sure our guys understand how how big that is. As a follow up to that, what you mm -hmm. said about letting it go, mm -hmm. is JJ's hold kind of in that? A little bit, probably, yeah. And so, like, the rest may allow a pinch of it, but if you go a right. little excessive, that's yeah. what you're going to And I think especially out on the perimeter, you're kind of exposed a little more, and any jersey that, that they're going to call that. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think it was a horrific hold at all. I mean, so I've seen worse that go, but at the end of the day, they called it. So, I think, you know, we got to teach them and, and, and make them understand. And, you know, maybe he could move his feet better and not be in that position. Maybe that's something to it. Lonnie, Lonnie will work on that this week. But... At the end of the day, we, we, you know, we don't need to shoot ourselves in the foot. We need to make the defense stop us and not stop ourselves. And that you know, goes back to being disciplined, and we got to improve in that area. Chip, how, how, how do you see now with Kobe out for mm -hmm. the foreseeable future, how do you see the mix working at wide out? Obviously, you only played the three guys, basically. Mm -hmm. Maybe Doc got in there for a snap. But, mm -hmm. I mean, you have the tight ends to be creative. Like, yeah. do, do you like how, did you like how the usage looked Saturday night, or would you like to change that maybe a little bit? Yeah, just a little I, I think I think Lonnie and I talked yesterday. We we need to play more guys, that, that, and Coach is always on us about that, and he's exactly right. We need to we need to we we have some depth at those wide out spots. Now, what's unique is we we've got three tight ends that can play. So a lot of times we've used up guys at twelve and thirteen personnel, uh, but we we need to play more wide outs. I think Doc has done a nice job, and he's earned some playing time there, and. And uh, so Lonnie made that point the other day. We don't need our, our those three guys playing all those snaps, and we'll work to doing a better job of that for sure. Um, you guys won the you know turnover battle for the you know, or you had zero turnovers rather for the third time against mm -hmm. Miami. Uh, Mac was in here saying that he actually likes to see more, I guess, points off of turnovers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From a practice standpoint, how do you kind of rep that the so-called sudden change? How do you kind of you know the quick turnarounds off yeah. of turnovers? And, yeah, you know, I, you know, we go back and look, and we, you know, it comes down to scoring in the red zone, I think. And you know, we scored, we didn't score enough touchdowns. Um, you know, when you get the, when the defense gives us the ball, you feel like it's a free possession. So we have to, you know, in a couple of those, we had some penalties that really, it goes back to those penalties that really shot ourselves in the foot and put us in long yarded situations, and we don't need to do that. I know, I think it said uh, interception comes to mind. We were down in that end of the red zone, and either the second, or third play, we had a penalty that put us way back. Uh, that might have been the one we threw Tez on a touchdown. I can't remember, but I just know that's a part of it, being more disciplined. You know, when you put yourselves behind the chains, it makes it more difficult to score. And, you know, we've done that, unfortunately. Uh, we did that last uh, Saturday night. And we got to make sure that when we get those opportunities, we take advantage of them. Coach is right. It's a free possession in some, in some case, really, if you think about it that way. And, you know, the more we can take advantage of that, our defense keeps giving us opportunities, then I think the better we'll be. How much when Miami declined that penalty, I think it would have made it second and thirty. How much did that change what you would have done had it been second and thirty versus third and twenty there in that situation, or did it matter? To you? I don't think so, just because it was so far. Um, you know, my thought was, can we get back in field goal range and get us a field goal? Um, you know, are they going to bring pressure or not? Which they didn't. Is you talking about the more he threw to Tez? Is that yeah? So yeah, that my thought was, you know. That was about the same to me. Just had an extra down, so maybe you're not quite trying to throw it down the field as much. But uh, we executed it pretty good, and um, you know it worked out. But you know, again, we put ourselves in that position with a, with a penalty. Gavin got dinged up and missed a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Has he worked his way back, or is there another reason maybe why he's no? He's worked his way back. I think he's uh, you know I think he's lingered some. You know, getting himself back with you know with his situation, but. 
uh, I think I think you'll see more of him as we go. I just think you know, you know, there's a whole protocol about practicing and and you know. Um, those guys uh, exerting themselves in practice and how their body reacts. And I think, you know, some days have been better than others for that. But I think the more we go, the better, the more he'll play. As a follow-up, have you seen mm -hmm. over time just like each guy's different when they have what he had? It just yeah. there is no specific time. Yeah, I think so now more than ever in this day and age. And we, ha we have the technology so much better about, you know, testing those guys and, and, and seeing how they everybody reacts different. And, uh, you know, he, he'll be back as soon as we can get him back going. Definitely, he's a guy that has a role. We had Willie Lampkin in here last mm -hmm. week. Just, I mean, here's a guy that's not six three and three thirty. Yeah. How does he? How does he get it done? You know, I think I think he plays. First of all, he he practices and plays extremely hard. It's it's a uh, it's a it's it's personal for him. You know, he's motivates really self motivated. He does a great job with leverage and hand placement and fundamentals. He's really good on his feet. Uh, with balance, and I think that's that wrestling background I mentioned earlier. He does. He plays with great leverage and pad level, and you know, and he and he and he plays extremely hard, and he plays with an attitude that he's going to get it done, and you know, he's very confident in his abilities, and uh, I think that that's in when you when he's you know when you're into that size, you have to have something special about you. We've seen that in every sport I've ever been a part of. Guys that 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 have a little bit of uh, self motivation. I think Willie has that. You got time. Mac talked about red zone efficiency. Last two weeks and not exactly like mm -hmm. what do you think is the either the roadblock or the difficulty for this team in particular when they get down to the point? Yeah, I think the penalties stick out to me the most uh, coming off Saturday for sure. Uh, I think that's that's an area that that really now you really sit you know just like the one we even threw to Tez for a touchdown. We're down there in the red zone. I'm pretty sure when we get knocked out of the red zone, we still score. But uh, I think for us, we just have to you know as a staff keep looking at. You know how can we how can we score touchdowns? That's what it, you know. When the bigger the games are, you need to get touchdowns instead of field goals. Um, and uh, luckily, we're making our field goals, so that's a good thing. But at the end of the day, we want touchdowns, and you know we just got to do a better job of executing. We execute what we're trying to do, and as a staff, as coaches, we got to make sure that we're giving them the best opportunity. But the, the penalties are huge. We cannot have the penalties, and and uh, and really because it's hard enough without penalties, right? So we don't need those for sure. All right. All right. Y'all have a good day. Thank you, Chip. Chip, what's the